Vandiyathevan entered the Asthana Mandapath through the door meant for the women of that temple. So he had to look at the women there first. Fungajalai, who was standing behind them all, heard some noise and looked back, and was startled to see Vandiyadevan entering in a mess with wet cloths. As soon as he saw her, Vandiyathevan told Manamegalai about the accident. It fell on her ear. The younger brat who was next to her crouched down and fell into their ears. The three of them rushed through the entrance of Vandiyathevan. They found the way he came with the water dripping sign and followed it. Vandiyadeva's words did not fall clearly on the ears of the others in that hall. Save it! Only a few heard the word. Kanamaran Parthapendra did not even hear that word. All they could hear was an indistinct scream. At first both of them thought that the figure that entered that way was the ghost of Vandiyadeva who had died. At that time, many people believed that the spirits of those who died prematurely would not leave this world and roam here. It's back to normal. Before the chief minister Anurudha could close his mouth, Vandiyadeva appeared there with dripping wet cloths, which caused such a confusion for them. But when the Sevakars following Vandiyadeva stormed in and seized him, the above confusion disappeared. Emperor! I'm sorry! This madman came running through the palace staircase door. We didn't even stop. The Achevakars said that and tried to drag Vandiyadeva with them. Mama! How bad is the life of this Vandiyadeva? Does he somehow escape from any danger? This astonishment arose in Parthapendra's heart and anger also flared up. Not knowing where he is going, he runs away and is stuck here. It would not be too late for him to escape once more. Having thus decided in a moment, Parthapendra, forgetting that he was in the presence of the emperor, rushed forward and grabbed one of Vandiyadeva's shoulders. He is not a madman. A murderer. A treacherous traitor who killed Aditha Kari Kalar. Saying that, he threw away the servants who tried to grab him with a jar. Gandamaran also ran after Parthapendra and held Vandiyadeva's other shoulder tightly. Both of them dragged him and made him stand in front of the Dharma Pitha where Sundara Chola Emperor was sitting. Emperor Vandiyadeva looked up at him and said, You are saying that this child with the milky face killed my son? I can't believe it. He himself brought me straw from Aditha Kari Kalan. Said. Yes, sir. He is the one who brought the straw. He is the one who met Nandini Devi who came in Mudupalak outside the fort of Tanjore and spoke the secret. He is the one who escaped from this fort once before. He also escaped from the underground prison. Said the small gardener. This is the one who stabbed me in the back and ran away. Said Kanamaran. Prime Minister Anuradha said, Why, father? You told me a little while ago that you killed him by riding on your back. He asked. Yes, I did. I saw that you would sympathize with this murderer and bring him back to life. Said Kanamaran. Pawnee's Selvar remained inactive all this time. He thought that Vandiyathevan had jumped into the river trying to escape again, and that he had not been trained enough to swim and had come back to the shore and entered the congregation. It took some time for his anger on Vandiyadeva to subside. On hearing the last words of Kanamaran, Pawnee's Selvar came forward majestically and stood beside Vandiyadeva. Father! This mighty prince is my life-giving friend. He who saved me in my perils in Ceylon and in the Mediterranean. I rejoice that he has survived. To blame him is to blame me said. The tone of authority in his voice silenced everyone for a moment. Then Prime Minister Anurudha said, Boney's wealth. Think for a moment. The one who is said to have fallen prey to the trap of the young Sambuvarayar has somehow come alive and jumped. They have already accused him of the crime. So isn't it better to investigate and clarify the truth? Said. Parthibendran said, Yes, sir. They are going to ascend the Chola Singh Adana tomorrow. They have the power to punish or pardon any criminal. But is it proper to say no investigation? Does it not give room for idle suspicions? He said. Also, our young man, we must think of another thing. 
there is a rumor going around that the prince sent this Vandiyathevan to climb the throne and conspire to kill his Tamayan. Shouldn't we interfere with that? said Kanamaran. Hearing this, all those present stood there in terror. Only Sambhavarayar came forward and slapped Kanthamaran on the cheek and said, You idiot! It seems like our ancient dynasty will be wiped out because of you. There is no one else like you in your ignorance of religious occasion. He said angrily. Gandamara stared at his father. His lips twitched. I don't know what he would have done or said the next minute. Fortunately, at that moment, the great Pulavetere came a step forward and caught hold of Sambhavariyar. Clearing his throat, he said, Sambhavariya. Your son has atoned for all the foolish things he has done. He has done a great charity for the Chola Empire. When you know that, you will be proud of having him. Wait a little. Don't be angry with him. Saying that, he grabbed Sambhavarayar and took him a little further and stopped him. Then looking at young Sambhavarayan, didn't you say that you killed this Vandiyadeva with a felt? Can you say that he was the one who crossed the river on horseback? The Prime Minister said, Sir. I must allow my disciple to say a word about this. Said. Alvar Kadayan came forward and said, My lords. I confess my guilt. This mighty prince did not mount his horse and run. He fell wounded after saving our true mad Hurandik Devar from the murderer. I carried him in a mudupalak and brought him into the fort. He has been here for four days. So young Sambhavariyar. He can't be on his back. He said. The great Palyavatarayar said, I also guessed the same, O Sambhavaraya. Forgive all the mistakes of your son. He has done great service to the Chola Empire. The person he ambushed and killed must be the son of Veera Pandya. Wasn't old Mad Hagen missing since that evening? He must be the one who tried to run away. What a great calamity God has saved from this calamity. He saved the kingdom. He stopped saying that. He happened to be there on the day we held the midnight meeting at the Sambhavarayar mansion. That day I felt ashamed that we had to do something under wraps so that this little boy wouldn't know. Then my brother said that he had met and talked to Nandini outside Tanjore Fort. He also said that it was with Nandini's help that he escaped from the fort. From then on, a seed of doubt started growing in my heart. I started thinking about the things happening around me and their causes. Often the darkness of illusion came and covered my knowledge but again and again rays of true light broke through and tried to dispel the darkness. Finally, by the grace of Durga Parmshwari, I came to know about the conspiracy of the Madurai dangers. If I had not hidden myself and listened to their speeches, I would not have believed. Even after that, Selvak Kumari Iliabrati confused my soul in a different way. He said that Nandini is his sister and I should not harm her. I suspected that he too might be deceived. However, I wanted to go to Kadampur in disguise and find out the truth. The bull-faced Sivas had me as their leader. Hear my shame, Nandini planted in my mind the seed of treacherous greed to be the emperor of this Chola empire. The bull-faced people came to burn incense for that greed. They wanted me to crown Madhurand Hagar and chase him away and become the emperor myself. One of those Kalamukharas, I Tump and Kari, was a servant in Sambhavarayar's palace. He also came to help the Madurai disaster victims. Frightened him, I learned that the Madurai menaces were in the hunting chamber of the Kadampur palace at that time. I learned that Aditha Kari Kalar had gone to Nandini's room and that Manamegali and Vandiyathevan were hiding there. The desire to eavesdrop on Nandini and Karakalar's conversation and know their secret shook my resolve. A desire arose to know the truth about Nandini. I got to know that there is a secret way to get to Nandini's room through the Jaffa storeroom. I joined at a good time. I heard the truth about Nandini from her own mouth. I also came to know that Aditya Kari Kalar was blameless in conduct. I also came to know how terrible Nandini and her people have planned to avenge the death of Veera Pandayan. I tried to prevent that plot from succeeding. But I couldn't beat fate. I had the privilege of seeing Carrie Kaler fall lifeless before my very eyes. 
After saying this, the great reaper covered his face with his hand and was amazed. The sound of the whistling resembled the roaring of a stormy sea. No one dared to open their mouths at that time. Everyone's hearts were melted by seeing the great grief of that brave old man. With the help of his diamond-encrusted iron chest, the great destroyer restrained the raging them all. He took his hand away from his face and looked around. Aditha Kari Kalar died due to fate. But due to the mercy of Durga Parmswari, at the same time Selvar of Pani who was in Parabhata also defeated fate and escaped with his life. Lord! Emperor! Brahmaraya! My dear friends, little kings! Enlighten Aromas Hivarmar in the Chola Singh Adana and crown him. Through him this empire is going to reach Makanatha. Said. Prime Minister Anuradha said, Sir. Their wish is going to be fulfilled. We were afraid that Pani's Selvar would stand in the way. Due to the fortunes of the Chola country, he himself was allowed to be crowned. But you did not say how Kari Kalar died. Said. Why do you ask about it? What if it was the hand that killed him? Indeed his death was by fate. Said the brave old man in a trembling voice. If we don't know that, the suspicion that has been cast on the young man who stands accused of the crime will not go away. Will Kari Kalan have to punish him for his death? Said Prime Minister Anuradhar. Aha! Blame him? Who blames him? Gondhamaran and Parthapendra impose. Aha! Utter fools! Kandhamara! Parthapendra! Why do you accuse this youth? What do you say he killed Aditha Kari Kalar? Anuradha answered this too. He is currently hiding in that param of Nandini Devi. Manamegalai was also there. She says that she killed Manamegalai. It cannot be like that. There is no blood stain on the knife she showed. Shouldn't she have said that to save Vandiyadeva? Couldn't she have seen Vandiyadeva kill Kari Kalar from his hiding place? If he didn't kill Manamegali, how could Vandiyathevan have killed him? With which weapon? With this weapon? With this bloody and dry sharp screw knife? Saying that, Parthapendra showed the screw knife that we have seen before. When Vandiyathevan brought Karakalar's body from the burning house and laid it down and fell unconscious, Parthapendra took the screw knife from him and kept it safe and now showed it to him. The great reaper said to him, Where? Give me that knife. He said and accepted it. Take a good look at it and say aha. This is the knife of Itumpankari. He muttered. Kandamara. Parthapendra. You and I must crawl three steps and bow down to this Vandiyadeva. You two fell into Nandini's trap of infatuation, just like this old man. But he alone did not fall into that trap. He did not throw this knife. He did not kill Aditha Kari Kalar. Why are you so sure? Asked Prime Minister Anuradhar. Yes, of course I do. I know very well who threw this knife and killed Kari Kalar. Who is who? Yes, yes. It must be said. If you don't say it, your suspicions will not be cleared. Listen, everyone, this boy was hiding in the Yaf barn. I came down through it. I grabbed him by the neck from behind so that he wouldn't scream at me. He lost his sight and fell down unconscious. He cannot even know at that time who killed Aditha Kari Kalar. Who? Who? Who killed? I bought this screw knife from I Tump and Kari. It was I who threw it. This is my right hand man. This Karen then, descended from the line of crowning Chola emperors, threw the knife but not at Prince Kari Kalar. I threw it at Nandini. I intended to slay that magical devil who had lured me into the abyss of infidelity. I threw it. It missed the mark and fell on Kari Kalar. Ouch! Ahaha! Many voices were raised in the press. I have tarnished all the charities the Pavur clan has done for the Chola clan for a hundred years. I don't know how I am going to remove that stigma. Brother! Here I am removing that stain. Roared the little reaper and drew his knife and rushed to his brother's side. You and I have vowed to take revenge on whoever betrayed the Chola clan. 
Now I will fulfill that vow. I will kill you this instant and erase the blame on our clan. Said the little reaper brandishing his knife. No. No. No bloodshed here. Said Sundara Chola Emperor. Prince Aromas Hivarma and Prime Minister Anuradhar rushed forward and held the hands of the young Pavatarayar. At that time the great Palyavataraya said, Brother. I will not entrust you with the task of wiping away the blame that I have attached to our clan. Nor will I make you the blame of brother who killed Damaya. Here I will fulfill my vow to Durga Parmshwari. Saying that he raised a small screw knife from his hand towards his chest. Others thought that he had abandoned his old purpose as he had resheathed the great sword he had drawn the previous time. No one expected him to use the screw knife he was getting from Parthapendra. Sir! Don't! Aromas Hivarma shouted and rushed towards him, and the great destroyer had accomplished his purpose. He fell to the ground like a deodar tree that had grown long without its roots and fell down with its roots and branches. Ha ha! Damn it! Voices like these started ringing in the press. A few people ran towards the fallen great reaper. At the same time, some others ran towards the Sundara Chola emperor who was reclining on his throne with his eyes closed. Council of Ministers dissolved. That night when the great reaper was struggling with death many people came and saw him and left him. Chakraborty, Aralmas Hivarma, Anuradha and the younger Prati Kuntha were also present. The emperor and others spoke highly of the services rendered by the great Palavatare to the Chola clan and the empire. They told about the brave deeds he had done in many battlefields in his youth. They admired and admired the fact that he rallied the Chola army, which had been defeated and scattered, and turned defeat into victory. He was praised for his efficient administration as a dictator of the Chola country. They left without saying a word about the events of the past three years. Then the four of them hid in the room where the great reaper lay, out of his sight. At that time, the small gardener brought all Alwarkadian. He brought him in front of the great reaper and made him sit down and sat down beside him. With eyes whose vision was rapidly fading, the great Palyavatareya looked at Alvarkadian and said, A.G.A. Why has this Vaishnava come here? I don't want to go to Vakanda, brother. I want to attain Shivapada. Said. Sir. Tomorrow is Vakanda Kadasi at dawn. Even if you want to go to Kailash, you must go through Vakanda. Said Thirumalai. No. No. You go back to your Lord Vishnu. Sir. I am not here as a messenger of Lord Vishnu. I have brought a message from my sister. Who is that, your sister? I tell you Nandini, the sister who grew up with me for so many days. Sir. Nandini sent me to convey her gratitude to them. She asked them to thank you for accepting it so that the blame for killing Carrie Kaler would not fall on her. She told them to tell you that no matter how many births they take, their love cannot be forgotten. All Workadians said. Aha! Uh -huh. Does she still think so? Let me rejoice at the thought. No matter how much she has cheated and harmed me, I cannot forget her. Is she not the daughter of Adamai, who gave her life to save the emperor? Will she really come looking for me in future lives, or what? Said the reaper. A faint smile now appeared on his face, which had already been covered with the shadow of death. Vaishnava. Someone must tell my truth to someone. I tell you. The knife I threw did not fall on the prince. He fell before that. The reason I confessed to killing the prince was not only to prevent the blame from falling on Nandini, there was a hundred times more important reason. Come near. I tell you. There is your friend Vandiyadeva, he is a wonderful son. The Chola clan owes a lot to him. He won the heart of the younger Brady. I was unnecessarily hostile to the younger Brady. If I had not confessed the crime and sacrificed myself for it all, someone would have continued to slander Vandiyadeva. No one would speak like that again. They will not dare. O oh Vaishnava, tell the younger brat some day to kindly forgive me for hating him. After talking for a long time, the old man started to catch his breath. 
If the heart of Alvarcadian who was listening to all that he said melted, isn't it surprising that tears were pouring down from the eyes of Kundeva who was standing in the hiding place behind? Vaishnava. One more thing. Tell the Prime Minister Brahmariar. We must somehow bring the Pandian crown and the jeweled garland from Sri Lanka. Valadha Prince is the right person for that. You and he should go and bring it. Then go to Madurai and perform a coronation ceremony for Pani's lord there. Do you see a role Mazai for me? Pray for one thing. Say that there is no other faithful companion of the Chola clan like him. Goddess. Durga Parmswari. I have fulfilled my vow. Here I come. Save the Chola clan. The voice of the great reaper, who had brought me thin to come, suddenly faded away. The life flame of that great old man was also extinguished. 